Can we have at least one pause? Then you get nine. Okay. Yeah. Can you get at least one pause? You get nine. Do you have all pause? You get eight. Do you have all two? Then you get ten. Okay. What is that? One case I equal to how many how far's first class be? You like that answer? All right. Let's review it a little bit. So in the actual test, most of the time you get. Uh, if it is multiple choice and have five choice, if you get it wrong, it probably get minus 0.2 or something. Or maybe it doesn't have any penalty. I don't think about it. So this question, did you read it? Yes. Yes. Did you, you didn't read it? You just answered it? Yes. We know the answer. So it is true, okay? Say you go to this much. Can you do it? Can you do it? This is more or less a solution, right? This is how I would do it. Okay. This is who cannot do this. Raise your hand right now. Otherwise, we skip. Should we skip or we don't skip? Don't skip. Go for it. Don't skip. Okay, go for it. All right. Select draw or false. No name gets zero. Hydraulic power of a pump in watts can be calculated from this. Flow rate. Multiply by delta p. You got that, right? This is just no drop out. That is true. Where q is the flow rate, delta p is the pressure difference between this charge and suction. Pressure in foot uh, per second unit is power force per. Oh, did I did you start the camera already? Okay. Power force per per square foot. You have that, right? Then we have the unit of flow rate will be cubic foot per second. The unit of power in engineering unit is force, uh, power force foot per second. Okay. Then we have horsepower equal to horsepower, I mean the, the hydraulic power in this unit, power force foot per second equal to Q, which is flow rate, cubic foot per second, multiplied by delta P, power force per square foot, not PSI. Okay? So when we have this relationship, the coefficient is 1, no coefficient. The relationship between the pressure and liquid head is delta P in power force per uh, square foot equal to rho in power mass per <coughs> Cubic foot multiplied by g foot per second square multiplied by h p equal to rho g h right so what it is is this this power mass multiplied by g we call it power force okay so this term these two terms combined become power force per cubic foot so if we already use power force we don't use g. So pressure, power force per square foot, is density. The numerical value stay the same. Okay? If you do 62, it remain as 62, but the unit, you can convert from power mass to power force to cubic foot. Multiply okay? by edge in foot. So this is true. This is because power mass multiplied by g equal to power force. Okay. This is true, because I did not do it if it is true or not. Or rho in power mass per cubic foot multiplied by g equal to that. Right? So if you read this, then that should be true, right? Okay, next, hydraulic power is power force foot per second. Is that correct, the unit by itself? Yes. Force multiplied by length, that is energy, energy per unit time, that is power, okay? That power equal to flow rate multiplied by density multiplied by height, or actually it's flow rate multiplied by pressure drop, okay? Flow rate multiplied by delta P. So this is true. 
is the same as in the SI, equivalent to SI. SI, power is flow rate multiplied by pressure. So in here is still flow rate multiplied by pressure. Okay? So this is true. Because I wrote power force over there. If I put power mass, then it, it is false. But I, I use rho in the unit of power force per cubic foot. A pump that has a head pressure of 10,000 Pascal, or in practice is discharge minus suction, and can pump at 1 cubic meter per second, has a hydraulic power of 10 kilowatt. This is not for you to prove it is true, okay? It's just 10,000 multiplied by 1 equal to 10,000. 10,000 watt is 10 kilowatt. All right, let, let's get some names. Um, yeah. Alex Jessic. Yeah, Where are you at? Alex Jessic. All right. Look at this equation, Alex. At oh, one cubic meter per second, is it equal to one over point three oh four eight to the power of three square foot or cubic foot per second? Given that we know, oh, I didn't, I didn't write that, but one inch is that much meter, so 12 inch is 12 multiplied by that, and then it's equal to that. So this is true or false? True. true. Okay, it is true. I just, okay, I just told you that. Every question is true. So, very easy thing that when, when I look at this, we know that one cubic meter equal to many cubic foot, right? One cubic meter equal to many cubic foot. So <coughs> this thing is in the bottom part is correct. One PSI equal to one power force per square inch. This by itself is correct, okay? Equal to one over 2.20462, what is that? What is that? Kilogram to power, so one kilogram that's one kilogram. One kilogram equal to two point two oh four six two pound, right? That is what it is. Multiply by. So this is mass. I try to do everything in SI, right? Mass in kilogram. So one pound equal to that much kilogram. Okay. But I need the force, so I multiply by g. G is nine point eight or six six five. That is g value meter per second square, right? So G multiplied by mass, that is force. Force per unit area. I have area of one square inch. I have to convert that to square meter. So I do over 0.0254 square. I get 6,000 something Pascal. This is true, okay? I already checked too that that's correct. This is a conversion factor. All right, by using um, foot per per second unit, one cubic meter, and 10,000 Pascal, we have uh, hydraulic power in that unit, equal to, oh, uh, hydraulic power equal to, this is the volume flow rate, right, in cubic meter per second. This is volume flow rate. The second one is what? Pressure drop, right? Pressure drop in power force per square foot. Then they get that much. And it is true, okay? Any question on how I do substitution over here? No, okay. Who get 10? Okay, if you don't get 10, try to get 10 because in the exam, it's either 15 or 0. Okay, this kind of question is either 15 or 0. So with the conversion factor of all, we have HP, hydraulic power in uh, horsepower. So horsepower equal to 550 power force first per second. Multiply by Q, multiply by the other P. Okay. So C equal to that much to a fault, and it is true. The way that I do it, I start with the equation with no conversion factor, whereas the conversion factor equals one. So
So this equation of conversion factor is equal to one. I try to change from power constant per second to horsepower. I know that if I put horsepower, one horsepower, the equation should automatically change that to uh, power constant per second. So I multiply by 550 over here. Okay. If I put, instead of power force per um, square foot, I put PSI, I have to multiply by 144 so that it automatically converts back to that, right? Then, um, I change from cubic foot to cubic meter. If I want to input it as cubic meter instead of cubic foot, I know that I have to divide it by that number so that it be like a lot more than one, right? So one over that would be 30 something. So this is to allow the unit consistency between this and that. Add everything together, I get that. And that is the C value. Good? Okay. Uh, I will try to post this before the exam or like today for this quiz. Try to review this, okay? It's not, easy, it's not difficult when it is true or false. But when there's no true or false, it's going to be somewhat difficult. All right? Any question on this? Question on the work on the partial project. Any confusion that you may have? What? Oh, okay. So who needs TA office out this afternoon? No one? No one? Okay. So this afternoon we will not have TA office hour, okay? But if you still need help, please come see me then. Uh, okay, that's it for the quiz. So in the actual exam, I mean final exam, if you get it correct, then you get what, 15 or something? If you get it wrong, it's zero, okay? So this means, last time we start at this page. All right. So if we don't use a head, but we use power force uh, per square foot, then we don't have 550 over here, right? Okay. So with that derivation, you should be able to come up with any of these numbers, okay, by yourself. So this hydraulic horsepower is not account for efficiency. This means the motor itself should do a little bit more so that we get that much power. So brake horsepower is 100 horsepower divided by efficiency. Let's say efficiency is 0.5. So this means brake horsepower is twice. So we have to spin, the, the motor has to provide double of the required power okay, to make it work. No question on this slide, I'll be reviewing it during the quiz. Good? Okay. Make sure that you can do this if it appears in the exam. Right? Question on this part from me. Okay. David Marion. That's David Marion. David, question one, explain about self-priming in the context of liquid pumping, please. What is self-priming, sir? Could you please repeat that one more time for me? Getting start. Start before. Uh, okay. Uh, self pumping. Yeah, you may say that it pumps by itself. <laughs> it can start with partially filled. Pump can be partially filled with liquid before it starts. It cannot be dry. Okay. Explain the full name of NPSHR. Colton Matas. That's Colton Matas. Okay, what is the full name of NPSHR? Positive suction head required. Okay, the rest review by yourself, I think you get it, right? I wish you You can answer this, can you? No. How many power force foot per second equal to one horsepower? 550. Okay, try, try to, okay. What happened when what happened when MPSH R is higher than MPSH A? It doesn't pump. 
Here, for example, a PD pump, uh, or double acting pump. So PD pump, we can have reciprocating pump, gear pump, okay, load pump, uh, tripex pump, those are PD pump. Double acting pump, uh, it can be reciprocating pump, where it pump twice per one crankshaft revolution, okay? What does PD stand for when we talk about the about PD pump? Positive displacement. Sorry, real quick question. You said you have two examples of a PD pump and a double acting pump. What's another example of a double acting pump? Double acting pump, another example. I cannot think about it. <laughs> yeah, I put just or something. Can you tell me another example of double acting pump? Double acting pump is just double acting. Uh, reciprocating pump. That's what I have seen. I, have, I don't have another one. Okay. So there really isn't a second one. There really isn't a second one. Draw a picture of the low pump. The low pump look like. Uh, where's the low pump? That low pump you have. This one is a low pump. Okay. You draw it. So that's a. Picture of the low pump. Uh, oh. Between a diaphragm pump and a gear pump, which pump is better for handling liquid that has a lot of solid particle? Diaphragm or gear? Diaphragm, okay. Give the name of the pump that is best at run dry periodically. Do we skip? No, we don't skip. Which one can run dry period periodically? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. I think it's diaphragm. Do we talk about diaphragm to be run dry period periodically? So when we have a diaphragm, it just move, but it doesn't do any bad thing in it. If we have a uh, like a screw pump that it requires a, a lubricant and we run dry, that's not good, okay? What kind of valve is to be installed after the pump to prevent the backward flow of liquid back into the pump? Check valve. When put two PD pump in parallel, the total flow rate is more likely to be double than put two centrifugal pump in parallel, true or false? What? True. Explain one type of pulsation dampener for the case of pulsation in liquid flow. One type. Which one do you want? There are three names to memorize. Acoustic dampener. Okay, we have a gas cushion type. You remember those names? How many? Okay, we asked that already. What kind of pump that the discharge flow rate decreases significantly as liquid viscosity increases, even if the pump RPM stay the same? Discharge flow rate go down with viscosity. What is that? Centrifugal pump. Okay. PD will have almost the same. What is the formula for Renault number calculation? The video meal. The following Moody like friction factor formula is valid for what case? For the laminar flow, right? Right. Okay. Friction pressure loss per unit length can be written as this. F in the bulk equation is Moody friction factor or fanning friction factor. <coughs> Moody or fanning? Fanning. Fanning. Correct. The minus dvd house of F in equation 17 is lit. Valid for only laminar, only turbulent, ball laminar and turbulent. This equation is, what do you say, Kathy? A, B, or C? B. Who else want to remember? A. A. Wrong and wrong. It is both laminar and turbulent. If we, we put F over that. If it is laminar flow, we use that F. It is if it is turbulent flow, F comes from Highland equation. Did you write that down? Highland equation. Yeah, please, please write that down. Where is that Highland equation? 
Let's go back a little bit. Or maybe it's not in here. That is, how many equation I think is in the pump one. You know what I'm talking about, right? How many equation? No, okay, let's show you that slide. How many equation is a friction factor for the case of turbulent flow that is explicit form. Okay. Explicit form. Implicit form is a Cobrook Y equation. It is difficult to solve in the exam. This one is what you have to write down. Okay. That is an explicit form. Okay. Cobrook Y equation, have you seen it? Probably yes. It has one over square root F somewhere over there. So we have unknown on both sides, we have to solve it. In the, by using the iterative method. But this thing is straightforward. Okay? That equation is the friction factor for the case of turbulent flow. Okay? So when I have it, 2f rho v square over d, it works for both turbulent and laminar. When it is laminar, f just has to be that width of, I mean, divided by 4 because that equation is uh, finite. So when it's turbulent, f has to be that. Good? Yeah. Okay, let's go back. One, two. Sunday stroke is the unit of dynamic viscosity or kinematic kinematic viscosity? Dynamic or kinematic, what are the different between this? Kinematic viscosity is rho over d. Yes, that is center stroke. What is the formula to calculate a specific gravity of gas? Weight of molecular weight of that gas over 29. Okay. API 610 categorize the core pump into three groups, which are over hung or something. You, you remember that? Uh, this is for this slide. I don't, so it has overhang, degree bearing, vertically suspended, not in the exam, okay, it's not in the exam, don't worry about it, but that is the answer. <coughs> not in undergrad exam, if you have grad class, yes, it could be. Okay, degree bearing, vertical suspended, what is the type of pump? for a twin screw modifest booster. PD or centrifugal? PD, very good, correct. In what situation that a charge pump is needed? Explanation has to be related to NPSS. Or, sorry, high suction head. High suction head. Or high pressure drop. Or low NPSS A but we have high NPSHR. So when we have high, high. required, high positive, such, uh, net positive suction head required, but the positive, uh, net positive suction head available is not as high as what is required, we can use a charge pump. Help pumping into another pump, that is a charge pump, okay? Uh, is this one axially split or radially split? Axially. What kind of pump is number number five? What kind of pump is this? PD or centrifugal? PD. And this one? PD or centrifugal? PD. What is that one? Diaphragm. And this one, the low pump is PD or centrifugal? PD. Too easy, right? It's easy now, and in the exam, I, I try to find the way to make it easier, even easier. Which direction does the impeller blade rotate? A or B? A, okay, correct, because it has to move along this curve and go up, right? What kind of PD pump is used as a multi-phase uh, sub -C pump? What kind of PD pump? Screw, right, if you just talk about it in Previous question. Describe one benefit of using multi-phase pump. Use where? Multi-phase pump we use where? What is the multi benefit of using multi-phase pump? 
we use it in the subsea, okay? Decrease the <coughs> subsea development cost. It's written in the previous slide. Reciprocating pump or centrifugal pump that has higher maximum efficiency in general. Reciprocating pump or centrifugal pump, which one has higher maximum efficiency? Reciprocating, because we push it directly. Another one, we just spin it, right? When we spin it and wish that it move forward, that is centrifugal, but when we push it directly, it's more efficient. All right? Uh, that's it for the pump. Any question for me? Right now, you should have equation for NPSHA, NPSHR calculation. And if you have more space uh, and you want to prepare for the exam, write your own your own way of how do we how do you get those numbers? Where where are those come from? Okay? Because you have a lot of space, you can predict what should be in the exam and you can do it ahead of time, right? So that when you go sit in the exam and you just copy it there. Make sure that what you do is your handwriting and it is correct. All right, this is a pump. Okay, we, we have something about the Reynolds number too. Uh, in the pump one, make sure that you know how to get that Reynolds number. You remember that Reynolds number? Reynolds number formula in the pump equation, we have it. Uh, this formula, that conversion factor. It is in the homework too, but you don't get the next homework. I think homework is about to be posted, but you don't have to do it yet, okay? Which, which one? Homework about the pump, homework seven. Okay? Homework seven can be given anytime before next Tuesday and it's still like nine days afterward or something. All right, next is metering. Gas and liquid metering. Why do we need to know about metering? Anyone want to tell me? So we get paid. What else? What else? What do we need to know about that? So we get paid correctly. And we know if it is not correct, why it is not correct. Or even if someone else try to pay you that much, you may say, it may not be correct because of this and this and this reason, okay? Did you check this, did you check that or something? All right, gas metering, there are several types, okay? Uh, for this introduction, I want to point out that the accuracy is very important, okay? If we have 300 million static cubic foot per day, okay, and my meter has just 1% error, not much, okay? And we sell it at the price of $1 per MSCF. So the error will be $1 million per year. You don't want that much error per year, right? $1 million per year is quite a lot. So if the meter has an error of 0.1%, that would be 0.1 million per year. It's still a lot. So it should be accurate, okay? Um, <coughs> Okay, let's, uh, when we measure the, okay, different location use different value for standard pressure, okay? In Texas, we use 14.65, right? 14.65. Somewhere else, use something else. Alaska, 14.65. Alabama, 15.025. Arizona, same. <laughs> California, 14.73. Colorado, is that much? So if we report it for the state, for the federal, we may have two different reports. It is standard cubic foot, but it's standard cubic foot based on different base pressure. So depending on where we are, okay, New Mexico is 15 point something. So ATA standard is 60F and 14.73. Uh, so when I sell the gas, I do the measurement, do I use? AGA standard or whatever standard. So we, whatever it is in the contract, you need to make sure that the contract itself spell out what is that number, okay? Because it matters do they use AGA standard or something else. And standard cubic foot per day is equivalent to mass flow rate. 
you know that, right? Is equivalent to the mass rate. And you can do that conversion, can you? Convert standard cubic foot per day to pound per day. Can you do that? 